So yesterday we were taking a load of oil cans and oil and antifreeze to the dump. And on the way, there was a, a crew of guys doing a tree, taking down a tree. So I stopped and asked them what they were going to do with the tree. And they said, take it to the dump. Why do you want it? I told them, yep, I would be happy to come take it. So yesterday, finished running our oil and stuff to the dump, came home, grabbed the trailer, and loaded up some oak logs. Let's take a look at what we got, see if I could do this one-handed. Yeah, it's about 28. Uh oh, 30 on that end. I haven't uh, haven't decided how I'm gonna cut these yet, so we'll have to see. Uh, and then also, yeah, I'll have to keep measuring these to see if there's a way I can set them on the mill that they uh, are closest to to fitting through there.
So in case you're wondering what all the dimensions mean when you're buying a mill and trying to figure out what your capacity is going to be, here's the things that you're looking for in terms of sizing and, and, and the shape of the mill and what it's able to do. So what ends up happening is there's a, there's a clearance between these two arms. Now every mill is going to be a little bit different, but if the mill uses these side arms like this to, to support the, the system, then that's going to create your kind of maximum cut or your maximum clearance. Uh, the reason that that is, even though your stops have a certain width and where they can mill and what their width uh, and dimension is, you also need to pay attention to the frame itself because what you can actually do is, is you want to shave tops off and you could trim this top off and bring this log down. So even if it was oversized, 30, 30 inches, 32 inches, let's say that I could only cut a 30 inch in between my stops, but up here at the top of the log isn't 30 inches. And so if I can make one pass, I can start reducing the width of this log when I roll it over. But you're limited by what will clear inside these arms and inside these rollers. One of the great things about Woodland Mills is they put their rollers on the inside of the frame. So the frame picks up a little bit extra distance. And so that makes a difference here where you can see I barely clear this nub on the side of this log. And that's what happens a lot of times. You'll get these kind of limbs and branches and, and where a branch used to come out and it gets this kind of nub on it. Uh, that's going to affect what you're able to, to clear in terms of a log. So even though a log might not be at its max, it might have these nubs sticking off. And you're either going to have to trim, trim those off with a chainsaw, or in this case, uh, we're able to kind of shift this log around and get it to clear. And we can actually make this first cut. The second dimension that you're looking for is the, the height, the total height that you can cut. Because we are just about at our max. The, uh, the very top, there's a basically a snap pin at the top. That's going to go up and hit the top of that frame. So this, this uh, mill will only go so high. And when we put a big log on here, uh, it has to be able to clear that. It has to be able to clear uh, this, this frame here in the back. There's a frame up in the front that it has to be able to clear. So you've got to be able to measure that and, and, and make that clear as well. And that's going to be your dimension from your blade up to the top of the saw frame. And so when you're looking at these dimensions, that's going to that's gonna tell you what kind of log you can cut, uh, even to bring it down in size so that you can start cutting the widths of them. Matter of fact, let me grab a, a measuring tape and we'll see that. Okay, got a measuring tape here. So the width of this log right now, You might measure the log at about 26, but where that knob sticks out, it's actually 30. And so our mill dimension here between the rails, you could go about 37. You'll see these dimensions. You'll want to see what it could, what it can clear in terms of a log. You'll want to see what kind of a throat cut it can make. You want to see, you know, what's what are those dimensions around the opening where your blade guides are, and from the blade to the bottom edge of any frame that you have uh, to see just how high, and then your measurement off of the bunks all the way to the blade to see what you can cut there. So if you add bunk to blade, blade to top frame, that tells you the maximum size log that you could possibly fit in here. So hopefully that helps. I'm going to try to square up these a little bit. This one's got a lot of big branches coming out of it, uh, so it's kind of a pain. So I'm going to see if I can get some of that trimmed down. I'm mostly just canting these today. Um, I didn't do all of them. These are the last two that came off the trailer, and so I'm going to kind of square these off. The other ones are actually uh, pretty big as well. I might have to do a little bit of whittling on those as, as, as well. If you guys uh, know of a great rip chain. I'm going to do some research, see what I can come up with as far as a chain that does a good job ripping. Uh, but if anybody has some recommendations on a great chain for, you know, making these rip cuts, maybe somebody that does have an Alaskan mill, you know, let me know what kind of chain you run. Um, you know, just it, at least if it's the, the manufacturer, I'll look up the size for the saw that I need, but uh, just let me know what kind of either degree or spacing, whatever the case is, kind of the specs on that chain. And uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys. So, all right, let's get back to milling. If you've got a Woodland Mills, this is one thing I've learned, uh, actually the hard way. Uh, this is a great position to put these log dog kind of clamps in 
when if you are fortunate enough to have a machine that you're moving them around with. You can see this one actually got into uh, with the forks. It's just so hard to see when you've got a log and you've got your forks way out there. I know people that have tractors, you've got the front end of the tractor in the way. And for me on the Bobcat, I've still got the plate, the mounting plate. So I try to take the, the dogs out and I try to kind of pull these clamps back, lay them down flat like that and uh, put them over top of the rails. And that helps me kind of stay out of them. I uh, wish I had done that before I got into this one. So someday I'll try to heat this up a little bit, see if I can bend it back in shape. But uh, so that's just a quick tip in case you do have one of these uh, woodland mills with these log clamps.